The first thing I want to do is check to see if there is a ground available. I know that's my hot wire. And between the hot wire and your supposed ground, you should have 120, 115 volts. We have nothing. There is no ground available. Just to make sure. So in this box, no ground is available. And I know with my tester, that's the hot wire. Next thing I want to do is turn the power off. And we're going to use a ground fault circuit interrupter to replace our non grounded plug. Here's our options. Find them one of these, which they are available, but sometimes they're hard to find. These are always available. So we can use these to uh, replace our ungrounded plugs. And we're going to hook up to our white wires when they go into silver, black on the gold, and we're going to leave that sticker alone because we're not going to hook up a load to this. So when you hit the test button, it would kill this plug and anything from the load out. We're just going to hook the plug up so it controls uh, items right here. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is hook up the black wire, which I marked, to the gold and the white to the silver. And we'll tuck that in. Okay, there you have it. We replaced our our grounded and ungrounded plug with a GFCI. One option when doing this is instead of using the GFCI is using a GFCI breaker on the circuit that you feel that doesn't have a ground. Or multiple circuits that you feel that may have non wiring or not a ground. Now, I, I don't really know if you can use a, a plug with a ground um, and a GFCI breaker. I'd have to check on that. But usually this is a better option than the GFCI plug. So I would recommend these and a GFCI breaker. But this is an option. You can use these in place of any plug that does not have a, a ground. No ground available. And I think even in, when you buy those packages they'll have a sticker that says no ground available. Now I buy these in bulk, and they don't give the stickers with them, so uh, you, you probably want to do that. Uh, put your plane on, and no ground available, and that's how you can replace a ungrounded plug with a GFCI plug, and everything uh, will be taken care of. And don't forget the better option. But do not replace the ungrounded plug with a plug that has a ground. That's kind of not acceptable to do that. Here's another situation. If you have two wires or multiple wires in your box. One thing you have to be concerned about is does the GFCI fit into the box, is there enough room? This box is kind of tight. It's not that deep. And you got a lot of old wires in there. And I think we'll be able to fit this in. 
But when you do that, hook both your wires onto and both your black wires onto the gold and both your white wires onto the silver. That way, if your plug trips, it will not wipe out everything downstream from this plug. You can lose lights, other plugs. Uh, it's better to have this one plug control my, this one set of wires control my one plug. Now, this box is a little bit stuffed, and I honestly would not go with this. I would put the unbranded plug on, and I would go with a GFCI breaker in the basement. And see what else that GFCI breaker controls. And on that circuit, you may not have to go with any of these. So I think in this case, instead of ramming all those wires into that box, go with this. It'll give you a lot more room in the box. You can see how there's a big difference in size. So, you don't want to overcrowd the box. So use one of these and spend the money buy a GFCI breaker because you most certainly don't want to cause a short in the box with this uh, ungrounded wire because you jammed it all in the box. So in this situation, either use this and do not use your loan part, use your line part and try not to use these. Try to use these with a GFCI breaker. And like I said before, I do not know if you can use a plug like this with a ground with a GFCI breaker, if that would suffice. I, I'd have to find that out. But I will, and I will get back to you and let you know.